Good morning, children, and happy Sunday to you. We thank God for looking after us throughout the week and bringing us again together to learn at His feet. Before we proceed, we want to pray to thank God for all that He has done for us. Let's close our eyes, hands together. Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for looking after us throughout the week, for bringing us again together to learn at your feet, Jesus. Our heart is open on today. Please come into our heart. Teach us your word. Plant it in our heart. Help us, O God, to be ready to meet you. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. go into a lesson titled ready to go what therefore for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh Matthew 25 verse 30 and our bible passage is taken from Matthew chapter 25 from verse 1 to 13 but we will not be reading all the verses um We'll be reading some selected verses. In the meantime, let's pick up our Bibles and follow as I read. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamp and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom here is Jesus Christ, whom we are all waiting and expecting, ready to meet by God's grace. Verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Three, they that were foolish, took their lambs, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Let's stop there for the meantime. I want to show you something. Have a look at this. This is a torchlight. It is used to light up areas that are dark so that we can see where we're going. In this torch light, there is a battery that makes the torch to light up. If there is no battery, the torch will be useless. It is not going to give us any light to see in the dark. So also, where we read about those ten virgins, they had a lamp, as you can see in the picture, which they use at that time and that lamp is what they put oil inside and light up they carry it around to give them light to for them to see where they're going and also you can see another lamp what it looks like when there is no light inside remember it says there was there is oil in their lamp this oil makes the lamp to light and this oil also represents the Holy Spirit it represents the Holy Spirit that let us know this is not good this is bad don't talk like this don't behave like this say sorry don't go that way listen to what you are being told the Holy Spirit tells us to do all that. And at the same time, the five wise virgins, we were told, they had extra oil in their lamp. As you can see in the picture, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The extra oil, you can see them, they, are, they bought extra oil because they are all getting ready to go and meet the bridegroom very excited yes now that extra oil is salvation is our salvation yes when we are saved yes with the spirit of god in us it gives us more of the spirit of god 
and God will continue to dwell in us, to teach us more of his word, to teach us more about him, so that we will be ready to meet, to meet him when he comes again, as he will soon be coming. So, in the lesson, remember, Susie and Amy were all getting prepared for that wonderful trip they want to go for. They've been preparing a long time very excited looking forward to it they just couldn't wait and now the day to go for the trip draws very close Susie has got all her, all her luggage ready and um they had to go to the church to get in the van immediately Susie has got herself ready got to the got to the church in the van and um amy also knew about the trip also talked about it got herself ready but on that actual day she was nowhere to be found right let's read the next verse in our bible the next verse says while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept. Because they were tired. And the, ne and the next verse says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet, to meet him. Right, they all slept tired just as Susie and Amy with all getting themselves prepared tired and as we are told at midnight there was a cry that the bridegroom has arrived everybody get yourself ready prepared get up get up get up go and meet him wow immediately you can see in the picture behold the bridegroom Right, girl, he comes. Go ye out to meet him. See the, the wise virgins? They got up, got their lamp, lighted up. The bridegroom, he is coming. Susie was so was ready, excited, got into the van, and see what happened to the foolish virgins. They came, asked him for oil. No, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. Go ye to them that sell and buy for yourselves. The oil they had before had finished. Because they don't have extra oil, they did not buy, they were not ready. The Spirit of God was not enough in their heart. So now, they had no oil to light up their lamp. Their lamp. They went to the wise one, asking for oil. You know one thing: your, you cannot share your salvation with another person. When you are saved, this your salvation is for you. It's not for another person. Every one of us must be saved. We all have to get saved in order to meet the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. So, they told them it will not be enough for both of us. They might as well go and buy theirs. And look at them running to get their own, their own oil at the last last minute. Last minute. Do you think the bridegroom will wait for them? After all the warnings, after all the pre preparation that he had told them that he's coming, be prepared, be ready, get saved. Hmm. Susie was ready, got to the church in the van, looked around for Amy, couldn't find Amy. Wow. Was very worried. 
She even asked them to wait a bit. Probably she would come. They waited a bit. No Amy. The van now took off. After they had left, then Amy arrived. Too late. They've gone. The foolish virgin, they couldn't even find as much as they could running back. And look at it. The door has been shut. Look at them banging on the door. Jesus said he does not know them. This will never be our own portion. We will be ready by God's grace. God will help us. He will save our soul. He will sanctify us. He will baptize us and prepare us for his, for his kingdom. We shall reign with him eternally. God will answer our prayer. None of us will be left behind. In Jesus' name. Amen. So this is still at the end of our lesson. So our take home is we want to be ready. And God will make us ready. Our activity for 2 to 5. Find and circle the world hidden in the puzzle. AG 6 to 8. Use the code below to find a lesson we learned from the 10 virgins. God bless us all. Bye bye. Good morning, boys and girls. You're welcome to Sunday School. I hope you enjoyed your week. Today, the title of our lesson is Choosing the Right Hero. Mark, the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Psalm 37, verse 37. Our lesson text is taken from Hebrews 11, verse 32 to 40, Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, and 1 Peter 2, verse 21. Then we have chosen a few verses, that is Hebrews chapter 11, 32 and 33, and chapter 12, verse 2. Gracious and joyous will be reading for us. Please read along with us. Hebrews 11, verse 32 and 33. 32. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets. 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of the lion. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. two. Looking unto Jesus, the offer of Fellowship of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I know most of us like painting, and sometimes before we get a pattern, or a design on our plain sheet, we will always have a pattern that we have created. So I have created a pattern here with this potato, and I also have a pattern that the print I have on my fingers. So for me to have this pattern the same on my plain sheet, I have to put it here. So that gives me the pattern and I can also put my fingers here to give me a pattern, a design. So the design I have on the potato and on my fingertips gives me this design. That is like a pattern that we use in life when we want to get a particular design that goes the same. The same thing happens in life. Children, we choose who we model our life after. And sometimes we call those people our heroes. So today we want to choose our heroes, right? That's why the lesson says choosing the right heroes. During the past 12 weeks, we have studied different Bible heroes. We have considered the question, what makes a hero? The answer to that question actually depends on who is asking the question. Sometimes, if it is a child asking the question, the answer might be entirely different from that of an adult. 
Likewise, if a Christian is asking, the answer will be different from that of a sinner. Now we already learned before that a person becomes a hero to someone else when he or she have certain qualities, abilities and attitude that are admired so much that it will be imitated by the admirer. Through this series of studies, we have been particularly talking about qualities that are exemplified by lives of about 12 God's faithful servants. These people can be considered heroes because all Christians admire and deserve these qualities that are found in them. And I know you remember some of the names of these heroes we have learned before. Can we try to remember some of their names? We can remember Elizabeth and Zacharias, Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, who exemplified obedience to God's instructions. Jesus, a perfect example. John the Baptist, Deborah, who exhibited true confidence in God. How about Gideon, the man who trusted God for victory? Caleb, the man who determined to follow God wholly. And what about the widow of Zarephath? Oh, she was very helpful and ready to share. How about Stephen? How about the woman who determined to touch the hem of Jesus' garment, where we learned about sticking to it? Yeah, recently we talked about Ananias, who was available and willing to help. And Elisha also gave an example of willingness to serve. These are heroes in the Bible. I want you to think about which hero a lesson story tells us of Marcus, who was to write about a chosen hero. For a while, Marcus was staring off the stairs. The space. His brother Austin asked him, Why are you staring? I, I thought you were supposed to be writing a paper. Marcos replied, Just can't seem to get started. I am meant to be writing about someone, either in the present or in the past, who I think is a hero, but I actually don't know who, where to start. Oh, his brother Austin suggested, how about myself? How about some other Superman, Matman, Captain America, or some other big Iron Man? Oh, then Marcus said, no. Some people may have qualities we admire very much, but it is important to look at their whole life because we decide to pattern after them. They may have influence in our life also. It is true enough that all of us can learn about something by patterning after the right kind of person, by choosing the right hero. And that is why it takes much carefulness to decide who your hero is. At last, do you know, he decided to write about Gideon because he had heard about Gideon right from when he was young. And so, it is very important for us today to choose our heroes carefully. Because the person we choose to admire and follow will certainly have great impact on her behavior. We do not just want to overlook that impact by choosing any hero in the world where we want to look at the Bible heroes that we have learned about and to choose the best one who we will pattern our life after. And moreover, we remember the greatest hero, which is Jesus Christ. Can any of you share your heroes with us? I know you may be thinking about it in your mind. We want to hear from our friends. Two of our friends, Elizabeth, and 
Tara Simi. They are going to tell us who their heroes are and why. My Bible hero is Deborah because she was a brave woman. She was a judge in Israel and helped a whole nation to gain freedom from the enemy. Even though it was a challenging situation, she had faith in God and was never afraid. I want to be brave like Deborah. One of my favorite heroes from the Bible is Stephen because he has a forgiving heart. Even at the point of death, he prayed for his enemies. Thank you very much, Elizabeth and Dara Simi. That was great. Hebrews tells us of other names that were not listed, but there is one thing that was common among all these heroes. And what is that? Faith. That by faith, they subdued kingdom. By faith, they received their dead ones come alive again. And so many other things that they achieve through faith. We can also convert that quality of faith, believing in God. And who is our leading example today? The quarterly tells us of someone who is the greatest, the perfect example that we need to follow. That is Jesus Jesus is our greatest example. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, we are told that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and because Jesus has left an example for us that we should follow after his steps, we can find that in 1 Peter 2, verse 21. I believe you are all challenged to ask yourself the question, how can I have these qualities in a greater measure as a Christian, the Christian qualities we've seen in all these heroes we've mentioned. Paul admonished Timothy that Timothy said, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of believers. We can start our journey today we can become a hero today that others will admire and follow. How can we do that? Through prayers. When we pray and ask Jesus to come into our hearts to save our souls, Jesus will do that and he will give us that qualities, that faith, that willingness to help. Oh, that obedient heart and other people can look up to us as heroes. And remember... The only person that we need to really follow and pattern our lives after is Jesus Christ because he is our perfect example. So always remember, this is our key statement, that Jesus is the perfect example. God bless you. The activity for the lesson is be a hero of faith. What makes someone a hero? So you will list the reasons these people are recognized as heroes of faith. Our lesson for next week is fix the inside and the memory verse will be taken from Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this lesson you have taught us. Father, please help us to develop the qualities of a hero. Help us, O oh Lord, even the primary power we pray that you bless the lessons and plant your word in our hearts. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much and have a lovely day. Bye.